Hello and welcome back to Tingwinger 5. Today we're going to be taking a look at the QNAP NAS TS251 Plus model. Now this is a high performance NAS, comes with an Intel Celeron inside it and 2GB of RAM and a remote control. And this is a quick guide on how to set it up once you get your QNAP NAS. This is the, again this is the TS251 Plus. Opening up the box shows us we have a nice welcome message and a quick get start guide. And inside we have the NAS itself. This box with the power supply inside, we have another cable here, and the actual NAS itself. Now this is just the NAS itself, it does not come with any drives. So take the NAS out of the box if you can do it, and it comes wrapped in this polystyrene for protection. Taking off the polystyrene shows us just how big this NAS is. Now this NAS is a bit bigger than the other ones I've looked at previously, but it's much more powerful and has a lot more features. We have the power supply lead, which I'm just about to move out of the way, as well as inside this box we have the quick start guide, telling you how to take the bays out of the NAS, screws to attach the hard drives to these bays, two network leads, normal Cat5e, a remote control to be used with the NAS, and the power supply itself. So let's take a look at the NAS itself. Spinning around right now we can see we've got a fan on the back, dual network ports, two, three USB ports on the back, power port as well as HDMI. It has two bays so we can take two hard drives and another USB port on the front. So the hard drives we're going to put into this NAS we have two 4 terabyte Western Digitals to go in, Western Digital Reds, and these will go in the NAS drive like so. First what we need to do is take them out of the anti-static packaging and get rid of the silica gel. We then take the tray and locate the screws on the bottom. So we put the hard drive in, a SATA facing outwards, and then we turn it over and match up the screws with the holes on the hard drive. Take your screwdriver and add screws. What we can do now is add the bays back in. So check your hard drive sequence. We have one on the left, two on the right. If you want to put them in any particular order, if you're doing any crazy raid, and you want to put them in so the arm faces down. You don't want to force it in with the arm facing up as it will not go in. So make sure the arm is out push the hard drives in and the arm should automatically close itself like so. Make sure you've connected both network and power and away we go. The QNAP NAS is now booting up. Hard drive 1 detected, hard drive 2 detected and it's going to take a little while to boot up. Next up we're going to visit the QNAP website and go to our NAS's page and go to utilities and we're going to download the QFinder Pro app in the top left there. Now this app allows us to set up our NAS from this computer and it's a critical next step that we're going to take. It also has a lot of information including vCenter plugins, just general virtual appliance, snapshot agents, QSnap and other utilities completely available for the NAS itself. So we're going to download QNAP QFinder Pro and install this to the desktop. Once the installs finish, leave it to open QFinder Pro for itself and what this is going to do is find the NAS on your network. So the NAS itself is on at the moment and it's been on for a little while because it takes a little while to boot up. The next stage is to go through the initialization. So the server is not currently initialized and we're going to go through the process to do so just by clicking yes. And this opens a browser window which is currently off screen and I'll bring on screen in just one second. So this is the browser window that's opened up and it will guide us through the smart installation guide and the rest of the setup for the NAS box itself. So on this page we have the NAS name at the top, it's currently just called NAS with a bunch of numbers. The default username is admin and the default password is obviously admin as well. So I'm going to add my own password into there and we're going to carry on through. I'm also going to rename it QNAP NAS so I know which NAS it is. This next screen is all about setting up the time. So you make sure you're in the correct time zone at the top, I'm GMT at the moment. You can select manual time or you can have it synced to an NTP server. It comes with an NTP server locked in, so I'm going to leave it with that one, but of course you can put your own in. And we're going to move on to the next page, which is networking address. Now I highly recommend you set up a static IP address, but for the moment I've left it as dynamic because I might move it around later. But I highly recommend when you're setting this up, you set it as static. This next page is all about setting it up with the services we want to use. So I'm absolutely going to be using it with a Windows machine. I'm not going to be using it with a Mac because I don't have any, but I am going to also be using it with Linux. And we have services on the bottom there. I'm going to leave them all ticked so it gives me the option later. Next is the all important drive setup. And we have three options for RAID. 
So the three options we have, two of them being RAID. We have RAID 0, which is combining the hard drives in there, so we have both hard drives to make one volume. We also have RAID 1, which offers protection, and JBOD, which offers no protection. What I'd recommend you do is you set it up for RAID 1. Now what this does is it copies the data from one disk to the other, so when the one disk fails, you don't lose your data. Whereas if you've got RAID 0, you actually lose everything, because you've lost half your volume. And the same for JBOD. You can also use it as single disk volumes, but when data files are corrupted, then you're going to lose everything anyway. So RAID 1 is absolutely your way to go. I'll try to put some more information about RAID and JBOD in the description below. Uh, another service this offers is encryption, so you can encrypt the disks itself, and you can also do a bad block scan, which I'm absolutely going to do, and I recommend you do it as well. So what this does is check the hard drives and make sure they're healthy. Yes, they're brand new hard drives, yes they should be healthy, but you never know. And if you're going to be storing data on these, you may as well check it for bad blocks while you're setting it up. This is going to increase setup time, but I absolutely did it. We're going to move on to the next screen in just one second, which is going to show us a summary of all the settings we want to use. So we have the admin, the password, the IP address and everything. Make sure everything is configured and it knows it wants us to go for RAID 1, which is absolutely fine, which is what I want, and it's going to start the setup process. So if like me, you're doing a bad block scan, you might want to go make a cup of coffee and then game a little bit and then carry on with your day, because it's going to take a little while. But if you didn't choose the bad block scan, it's going to set up quite quickly and be ready to use. Once it's complete, your NAS is ready to go and you can start storing files and anything else you want on this NAS. Now this NAS itself, as I mentioned before, has actually a lot of features we need to explore. So the next section of this video, we're going to explore some of the features this NAS can do and I'll probably do some more videos afterwards to show you in depth what these features are. So the first thing you want to do is go back to QNAP QFinder Pro, select the NAS, log into it, and we're going to upgrade the firmware to make sure it's running the latest version of the firmware so we have all the latest features. So log into your NAS, wait for the screen to load up, and when it's loaded, this is the screen we're presented with. Select the option to automatically upgrade the firmware to do it the easiest way possible, and we can upgrade all the devices with the same model number if you have the multiple numbers of this NAS. So press start and this is going to start the process off and it's going to upgrade the NAS and do a reboot, which is going to take a little bit of time. Now everything's set up, if we go back to the browser page for the NAS itself, we can see this. So this is the login screen, we're going to log into the NAS right here, and then we're going to log in securely, so make sure you tick the box there. It's going to come up saying your connection is not private, but that's just because the certificate's issued by the NAS itself or QNAP itself. Because we know we're connecting to the NAS, everything is fine, so we can proceed. Other websites, that's a little bit dubious, but we know we're connecting to the NAS because we can see the local address in the top left hand corner. Immediately as we logged on, we were asked to join the QNAP beta program, where we would receive beta updates for the NAS, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not interested in doing that. We then have a welcome screen where it's going to take us through the features, where we have the photo station and the music station, where we can access our photos and our music, video station and download station, so this thing can manage torrents and all sorts of downloads, as well as videos, and carrying on through we can connect to a wide range of devices, including Apple AirPlay, DLNA, Chromecast, USB, HDMI and Bluetooth. DLNA media servers for PS4 and Xboxes, Access your device anywhere, we'll explore that later in this video where I access from my phone. As well as we can sync to the NAS itself. So using the QSync app we can sync all of our data to the NAS so it's completely backed up and it's actually stored in three places because we have RAID 1 installed on our NAS so we have two drives backing up the same piece of data. So let's carry on straight into the interface and get started. This is it, it's like having an actual desktop in your browser. So hybrid desk station we'll come back to later, but we have control panel with a lot of settings and app center where we can go and download applications for the NAS itself. There's lots of things already installed, some things require updates, and we can install more apps that are available in this app center. So the first thing I did is open up photo center and find a photo. I've then gone through the files on the NAS to find the actual photo itself. So we can see I've got the file open here and the file open in the background there 
where I can see it. So I've got the NAS open here and also in the background here on the actual web page itself. So I open it in the file explorer and on the web page. And then I've noticed that it's still syncing. So it's still syncing the RAID up. Not everything is protected on the NAS itself. The NAS itself can run and work fine, but what we need to do is wait a little longer for it to sync up. So in the meantime, I decided to set my phone up. We have two options. So this first option is QFile. We're gonna go into this app. It's free to download on the App Store, available for Android and probably iOS as well. And I've gone straight into the NAS and found my previous YouTube video on Aftershocks. This is the crowdfunded video. But alternatively, we are also going through the Plex app and we can see everything as long as we've set it up. The NAS is fully compliant with my USB stick. I plugged the USB stick in and I'm able to transfer files to it or take files from it and eject it safely from the device, exactly as I would a normal computer. There are lots of apps available on the App Store for USB cameras, so I plugged a USB camera into it. And you can use this NAS as a CCTV system. So I've plugged in a normal webcam. It's a 720p webcam, Microsoft Live Cam Cinema, if you want to look it up. And if we apply, we've now set it up as a security system. So it's going to stream the video out, and we can even set it up with another app to record. So once it's finished processing, we'll actually be able to see straight through if we go to the live view here, and we can see me filming the video. So there's a few features so far, but the coolest feature by far is using the HDMI output on the back of the device. Now, what we can do is actually install Hybrid Desk Station, and this gives us all of these apps, uh, a couple of them you will recognize. And this makes it so we can plug it into the TV and enjoy anything that's on the device on that TV. So it's gonna take a little while to download all of these things, but once it's set up, we can plug the NAS into any HDMI device and watch videos on there, audio on there, or anything. I've now plugged the NAS in and logged into the screen, and we can see I'm now using it with the remote provided. So let's zoom into the screen and we can actually explore the proper features. So one of the main features of this is Kodi, is right here built in with the NAS. So it comes with the hybrid desk station, and what we can do is log into Kodi and view all of our multimedia here. Now Kodi, for those of you who don't know, uh, is a very good multimedia streaming app. Now this is outputting the audio through the HDMI itself, so I'm not having to stream through anything else. It's outputting through the HDMI, so it'll be compatible with your TV. And Kodi, of course, plays videos as well as audio. But what this thing also does is have LibreOffice completely installed on it, so you can use the NAS as an actual desktop computer. This thing easily has the processing power to write a Word document or a calculator spreadsheet or a small presentation. And it's all built in, completely free, to the hybrid desk station. Typing in, it's plugging a keyboard as normal to USB and you plug a mouse in as well, and you can use it as an actual desktop. So I know what you're thinking. Now that I've got a mouse and keyboard plugged into it, can I game on this NAS? And the answer is yes. So once I've sorted out the resolution of OpenTTD, we can actually play OpenTTD on this NAS. So although it's been so long I can't remember how to play TTD anymore, I can still play it in 1080p on the NAS itself. I just have no idea how anymore. But remember, I'm on the NAS, so I still have access to all of my files, even though I'm now playing OpenTTD on this NAS. The last feature I want to talk about on this NAS is virtualization. So I can actually run virtual machines on this NAS, which is huge. I can run a full virtual machine on this NAS. So I can run, example, a Linux server or a Windows server. Anything I want will work on this NAS. And it even takes care of the virtual switching. So let's set up the device's default folder. What I'm going to do is create a folder inside public for all my virtual machines. So at this stage, we're just going to call it virtualization. And that is where I'm going to store all of my virtual machines. If we then carry on through the process, we can see virtualization is there. We can choose the Ethernet adapter we're going to be using, which is the top one, which is the only one I'm using for the moment, but I could plug a second one in and use that one instead. It's that granular and it gives me that much control over this NAS, which is very impressive. 
So we're moving on through the process. What this is doing is guiding me to what sort of network I want. And what I'm going to do is set up a bridge network between the virtual machines and my actual network. It gives me complete status of the NAS, shows me exactly what's going on. And all I need to do is import an ISO file and then I can start creating virtual machines. Which is a very powerful tool that it's letting me do. So this has been how to set up a QNAP NAS TS251+. Plus. Uh, the NAS itself has a wide range of features as I've shown you in this video. I might do more videos on if you're interested, let me know in the comments. I know this video has been a little bit longer than normal, but it has a lot of features that I actually need to cover. This NAS is something special, it's like having a full computer the size of a NAS, which is very impressive for what it's doing, and it's doing the NAS function at the same time as the laptop function or the desktop function. Thanks for watching everyone, let me know in the comments what you think, and follow me on the relevant social media and check out the description below.